Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bacor, your host for episode 62, as I'm giving you my review and impressions of a model year 2020 Kia Soul Electric here um, in this polarizing green, <laughs> whatever color you want to, whatever adjective you want to give to the color. Uh, I have to admit it's something, it's a, it is a nice color. It does grow on you. I uh, wasn't sure when I first picked this car up uh, and I want to thank Kia Canada for uh, lending me this car and disclaimer, of course, I'm not paid anything by Kia Canada. No, nothing's paid to me. They just let me use the car for a few days for media testing to, uh, for the press uh, as part of their media fleet so that I I can give you my comments on it. Uh, so I, I, the color is going to be your choice. The, co the car does come in multiple colors, but um, you know I have to admit it is something that is growing on me. Right, so let me give you some of the specs for this vehicle. This is the long range version. So here in Canada, at least where Kia is selling two versions of the Soul, the smaller range, just under 40 kilowatt hour battery pack version, which I'm not gonna talk about today. And the longer range version, this is the 64 kilowatt hour battery. It's the same battery pack drivetrain that's in the uh, Kia Nero EV or the e-Nero, depending on what side of the pond you're on. Uh, also the same as the Hyundai Kona Electric that I just uh, reviewed last week. So you can watch uh, episode 61 to see my review on that. Same mechanics basically and the specs on this are 201 horsepower, 150 kilowatts of power um, and 291 pound-feet of tor torque or 395 newton meters depending on what you like to see. Uh, now all Canadian versions come with a heat pump and that's something pretty important for colder climates uh, and even for running the AC when it gets uh, cool it uh, works very efficiently in the reverse manner. Now this is the the uh, the um, uh, 64 kilowatt version of the EV Soul or the Soul EV only comes in one package. Uh, it's basically a premium, and it comes with everything: leather seating, a sunroof, um, uh, the, the colored side view mirrors, uh, rain sensing wipers, and so forth. Uh, all this kind of stuff. Uh, you know, power front seats. Both the driver is a six-way power with the lumbar support. The passenger is a four-way power electric. Um, air cooled front, uh, air and heat cooled front and rear seats, um, and all kinds of other accents in this vehicle to, to kind of distinguish that it is the electric version, um, including, including chrome uh, interior door handles uh, and a nice uh, fabric. It's got the Harman uh, Kardon premium sound system and as similar to the um, Kona electric, and I believe the Kia Nero, when I when I drove it, I, it's been a few months, so I don't remember exactly the Kia Nero. Uh, but this, they do have a heads-up display. Um, and uh, the what something I did find nice on this one was ambient mood lighting. You can play around and change different lighting settings and all LED interior lighting. Now, as you can see with a lot of the video that's been running as I've been speaking, uh, the design is pretty cool. They, you know, they've tweaked it for the 2020 model year, slimmed down the front. I personally do like this design over the uh, previous years. I think it's just a little bit nicer look. I, I've got lots of compliments. In fact, I had a couple of people when I stopped that lights roll down their window said, "Hey, that's pretty cool. What kind is that? Electric? What kind of car is that?" And uh, you know, giving my 10-second review at, at a stoplight. Um, so it actually has been pretty eye-catching, especially this color. And being that it's electric, it's super quiet. Now, be, being that it has that 64 kilowatt hour uh, battery pack, which is uh, actively cooled, um, you can charge it in about uh, through trickle charge on level one at about 60 hours. So you need a good couple of days and some more if it was empty. Level two, your standard charge is about nine hours, uh, nine and a half hours for a level two. Excuse me, as it's a windy day today and it's blowing around my notes. Um, and uh, for level three fast charging, it does support up to 100 kilowatt fast charging. Um, uh, so for, at a 50 kilowatt charger, which is the norm still right now, especially here in North America, as uh, they're just starting to build out the Electrify America, Electrify Canada, and some other outlets that are supporting beyond 50 kilowatt charging for DC. Uh, but the Kia Soul is, is rated to support up to 100 kilowatts of ultra fast charging as well, if you could find a supported charger, which will take this from zero to 80 in about an hour. And I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit later in this segment and my actual findings for charging speed. Now it does have 17 inch tires, which I did find quieter than the same tires. I'm not sure exactly the tire brand that was on the Kona Electric, I'd have to look that up again, but these ones seem to be quieter, they're next end tires. 
They seem to be much quieter than the Kona. And in fact, when I did my uh, decibel sound test going at 100 kilometers an hour on the highway into a bit of a wind with everything closed, the fan off, the radio off, uh, this was a little bit quieter than both the Kona and my Leaf. Um, coming in at about 77 to 78 decibels from a sound rating versus about 80 on the other cars. So it's just slightly quieter and I was very impressed with that because it's something that I didn't think would happen being the very boxy design uh, I would suspect more wind noise coming from this vehicle but it actually is very well insulated and on the highway there's extremely little wind noise. In fact there's more wind noise coming out of the Kona electric I found than I did on this. Both have power moon roofs both you know so uh, if it was something to do with the the moonroof, not a seal or something, then they both would have shown up the same. Now the overall interior is very comfortable in this car. I drove it around for uh, a week. I've been driving it around for a week, put over 500 kilometers on this vehicle, probably closer to six by now. Um, and it's very comfortable. In fact, I found the interior better for me ergonomically than the Kona was. Um, so again, that's a very personal choice. And uh, as I tell everybody, if you're looking at a new vehicle, any new vehicle, but hopefully an EV, you do need to go sit in it dr and try to drive it if you can, but at least the ergonomic feel so that you can reach everything and be safe from a sitting position and being able to operate all the controls. I found this extremely easy to operate. The dash is very well laid out. The controls are very well marked. In about two minutes, I was able to find everything. The menuing system in this vehicle is exactly the same as the Kona and the Hyundai uh, Electric for, for with a couple of small exceptions. Again, this has accent mood lighting that you can um, uh, play around with. The Kona Electric doesn't and so forth. Uh, but other than that, it's the same software you can tell by looking at it. I do like the display in this vehicle, and I believe it's the same display system that's on the Nero. Now, in the center menu, I, I actually really like this console. I, I don't remember the, the Nero. I'll have to go back and look at my video to see what it looked like. But I have a feeling it's fairly identical because they, they, they share a very similar technology. I really like the layout where you have the navigation screen here on this page. Um, it's almost like thirds. And then this third, you have your AV. In this case, I have the radio off for YouTube. And then in this case gives me battery information at a glance I get my percentage my range uh, the necessary information if I want to go into any of the particular uh, uh, information then I can go into the nav screen and so forth and then go back to the home um, again with AV if I want to go into something I don't want to connect any Bluetooth but I was streaming earlier and then of course I want battery information I can scroll through menus it gives me the um, Friday egg approach that we talk about, which gives you its current range. You can uh, set departure times if you want to start charging and stop charging. Energy information, how much uh, uh, CO2 you've saved, different kinds of modes, winter mode, warnings, EV routes, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's fairly similar to what we've seen on the Nero EV. Um, one thing I will say is that, again, I like the, the detail in the energy. As far as the battery goes, it gives you different uh, information. If you scroll in, then here's, and you'll see some snapshots here when I was driving and how much consumption is going on. I've had one comment, a couple of comments on YouTube of people saying that all the tech is just draining a lot of the batteries in these cars um, when you get so much technology. And really, when I was driving, uh, at highway speeds uh, I'm not even using a kilowatt like you know like half a kilowatt or, or not even three quarters of a kilowatt for for all the lights on the fog lights uh, all that kind of stuff the fan going it doesn't really use all these accessories don't use a lot because most of them uh, derive their energy from the 12 volt battery not necessarily the battery pack that's in that's powering the vehicle so there is a difference there as far as electronics and all that stuff goes so just remember that it doesn't really impact the the range when you have all this high tech as somebody had noticed to me so you know I like the the breakdown of this uh, energy use um, you know you can do different things with it uh, again it tells you how much charging all so forth um, that you can do now I've started this car with 460 kilometers when I received it I've done 140 kilometers already and my range is down to 331 um, so obviously not as good particularly from the uh, with the comparison to the Kona however 
um, really, really good. Uh, it had, I thought it was gonna go down a lot quicker because it started to move, but it's actually been stabilizing as I drive. The more I drive it, the more it figures out my style, which is fairly economical. I've been driving in eco mode for pretty all the time, except for a couple of tests that I've done. Um, and it uh, continues to um, to uh, update the, the GOM, obviously the range guesstimate uh, based on driving style, but it's pretty efficient. So uh, I do like the menu uh, option here. Um, there's lots of um, settings you can do. Uh, lots of different screens that you can go through for different settings here as you can see um you know uh, program voice uh, vehicle settings um, all that kind of stuff uh, i'm not going to get into these because i'm sure there are videos that are explaining them uh, different how you can you can actually uh, tune each mode of eco normal and sport um, and set some different settings for those if you wanted to fine tune it but uh, the factory ones are pretty nice out of the box um, i think that's about it for the menu system the one main selling feature I can say about this vehicle in my driving for a week is range. Um, I was quite surprised, surprised at the range I was able to get on this vehicle. Um, it's not as efficient as the Kona. Um, the Kona was able to get into the 12 per uh, 12 kilowatts uh, per 100 kilometer range, 12.2, uh, 12.5, 12.4. This one, uh, I've been hard pressed to get it under 13. Uh, I had it into the, the high 12s for a little bit and then doing a couple highway runs, it moved up into the low 13s, but it's around 13. So still a very good number for a vehicle of this type of aerodynamic shape and size. Uh, it's about 20, just under 2,200 kilograms. From a weight, you can do the conversion to pounds, so it's not a light car. One thing I did notice is uh, the, the power that comes out of the front wheel drives is more than enough for this vehicle. In fact, I had a hard time when it we, we had a big rainstorm last night and I was driving back from somewhere and I had a hard time to not actually skid the wheels out go, going from a stoplight, even running in eco mode. Uh, now, I, now there is traction control, which is on, which will start stop that spin, but it was, you know, kind of trying to get going out of light without really giving it a whole lot of power, a little bit more than maybe usual. Um, so it's something to be cognizant about, um, you know, it could be the tire, it just could be the traction on these tires um, but there is a lot of power more than enough coming from this uh, and I drove it in eco mode all week with a couple of testing in both normal and sport mode the sport mode is very fast as they all are in EVs really I see no sense in the other modes um, for the best economy the best efficiency I would run on eco mode it's more than fast enough to get you anywhere in fact it's still really really quick now, when I picked this vehicle up, I had it showed a, a range of 460 kilometers at a full 100% state of charge. This vehicle is brand new; only had about a thousand kilometers on it, so I've only put about four, about 500, as I mentioned. I drove it for five days, and at the end of the week, I took it. I got. I put on 421 kilometers, uh, and was still showing 15% state of charge, uh, and showing 72 kilometers of range remaining. And if I do the math, that means if I would have done those 70 two kilometers I would have actually traveled to 493 kilometers which is well over the starting range of 460 kilometers so that was a big surprise to me whereas here I basically gained range which was quite phenomenal because the charging I left it at level 2 auto and similar to the Hyundai uh, Kona uh, electric and to the Kia Nero they use a similar uh, regenerating system um, and there's this auto regen so that it'll actually automatically add a little regen as you're slowing down detects a car in front of you it has to, it has to be able to detect something in front of you to be able to do that otherwise it doesn't kick in but you can set it for you know one two three regen or a regen off basically which is a coast mode In that week period, our temps here were anywhere from 15 degrees to 25 degrees Celsius. We've had quite an up and down week. Um, on uh, the day that I've recharged this, it was 20 degrees Celsius. And on uh, one day we got up to 28 degrees, where I actually had the air conditioning running for about half the day I was uh, in Toronto and back. Um, and even with all that use, I still had a, would potentially had more 
uh, driving range available than, than the original GOM showed. So hopefully you understand that trail, but that was actually quite a surprise for this vehicle. So being that it may not be as efficient because I am hearing Kona EV owners, you know, uh, talk about, I mentioned on the last episode that they're getting over 500 kilometers on, on the same pack. There's something that Hyundai is doing to their BMS or tweaking their efficiencies. This isn't that far behind. And I think this is a little better than the, the Nero, which is a little, a little bigger vehicle, a little heavier as well, but the same battery pack, same drive system. So obviously it won't get as good range. So this is a really good compromise if you want something that has good range, maybe not as great as the Kona, but it has a little bit bigger package than the Kona. Um, and you know, uh, you'll you see here video of me going into the back seat and uh, the, the, the size of that back seat relative to me. Now, if you looked at the Kona video, it was very tight. My, my legs were pretty well up against the seat and I had about a fist width, a fist, fist height of headroom in the back. Here, uh, I have at least a fist or more of space between my legs in the back seat with the front seat set as it, as it is for me driving the vehicle. That was the same test I did in the Kona. And I have uh, well over a fist, almost two fists of, of height room in the back seat. This is a bit taller deck. It doesn't slope down as much. So. Uh, so from a package, this is a little bit more comfortable on the interior, in my opinion, very much so than the Kona. Not knocking the Kona. The Kona is a great vehicle. But it, again, it's a personal preference. You would have to check it out based on your needs and see what works best for you. All right, just want to give you my driving impressions on the 2020 Kia Soul EV. This is the premium model, so the 64 kilowatt hour battery pack version um, runs, well, I mean, you know, Summary again, range, range, range. Uh, Kia and Hyundai have really done it well as far as the range goes. My, my range is actually increasing as I drive and that's normal. It's only got about a thousand kilometers, 1100 kilometers on this vehicle. So it's still kind of learning driving modes. And I'm sure that the guys who have tested it before me have hammered this thing with acceleration and stuff. So it's not gonna get the most e economical uh, range estimations, that's for sure. So I've been running in eco mode and only did a couple of quick burst runs just to get a sense of the speed here and the acceleration, but pretty well driving in eco mode all the time uh, so that I can see what real life um, range is going to be because I'm just doing normal speeds, keeping up with traffic, um, you know, not accelerating too hard. I mean, these things have, as I keep saying, like a broken record, EVs have enough acceleration for all circumstances. You don't need to hammer these things to get going. Um, so my thoughts really is this is a very, very smooth riding vehicle. It's a little smoother than the Kona that I just had. As I mentioned in that video, I thought the Kona suspension was a little stiff um, and a little bit more harsh on the bumps. Uh, nothing that would get you out of uh, into any issues, but certainly noticeable. This is a bit more softer ride. I would say very comparable to my Leaf, um, other than, you know, being a bit more boxy style, so the weight distribution is a little different, a little bit more hoppy uh, from that perspective, but the ride is, is noticeably a little bit more, more smoother. Again, the Kona wasn't bad at all, I'm not trying to knock it, but if I'm comparing the two, there's a difference, and this would be pretty well identical or very, very similar to the, um, the Nero EV. Um, this is a very nice package. Now, I thought it would be a lot noisier than it is because of the box design of this thing. It's almost like taking a brick and just putting wheels on it. And, you know, from an aerodynamic perspective, it's not going to be like a Porsche or, Porsche or anything. But surprisingly, uh, it's actually lower than both my Leaf and the Kona that uh, I just tested. As I, If you watch the Kona video, you'll see that I talked about about 80 decimals at highway speeds. Well, I measured this and got 77 decimals at the same circumstances, same stretch of highway going into a bit of a wind at 102 kilometers an hour set on cruise. So the wind noise is, there's really no wind noise in this. It's very, very quiet, um, which is not at all what I expected uh, for this vehicle to be, uh, the Soul EV. So I'm, I'm quite surprised and pleasant, uh, pleasantly surprised at that. As far as driving characteristics go, you know, it's, again, it's, it's identical almost to the Nero. The Nero is a little bit bigger, a little bit more weight to it, so it's going to have a slightly different drive characteristic. Um, but this is very similar. You sit high, you're, you're stepping up a little bit into this because of the box design. I like to have the seats up high so I can see over. I'm not that tall, so I like to be able to see over the dash. I also like the fact that, uh, again, you can set the, the, the lane changing turn signals to three, five, or seven, something I've, I've talked about on the Nero EV, where I like to be able to have that latitude. I like to have a bit more signal time in changing lanes and so forth. Um, 
you'll you'll see a quick video um, on the, the display layout which I talk about which is very easy again I just got it into this thing and within a couple of minutes was able to find where all the buttons are what they do and work my way through the menuing system to set everything up so to pair my phone to just really find where everything is took a matter of minutes it wasn't very complex at all didn't have to even crack a manual open uh, to do all that I don't know uh, you know the Kona, as I mentioned, wins on efficiency, but this is a really close second because it's not, you know, it's, it's handling the range quite well. You know, as far as all the other systems, the adaptive lane keeping, the adaptive cruise control, it's identical to the Kona and to the Nero systems as far as what's displayed and how they handle. Again, I think Kia and Hyundai have done it right. They finessed the the systems just ever so slightly so that they're not so jarring in the acceleration and the deceleration excuse me they will decelerate quite quickly when it has to obviously but if you just leave it in normal you put up a few few uh, miles in the or kilometers per hour in the speed and it will gradually go to that speed um, this only has a rear backup camera it's a good camera um, again it has that same similar feature that if you have the radio on a little little loud I would say and you put the car into reverse it actually uh, lowers the volume on the radio when the rear camera comes on a nice little feature again to keep your attention and what you're doing and backing up one thing that is different here is that the the pedestrian warning noise is very very subtle it's nowhere near the loudness that it was or the type of sound that it was on the Kona it's very actually a little hard to hear so it's very subtle kind of like the leaf um, probably a little bit less volume on that. So that is something that Kia may change as these laws come into effect that you have to actually have uh, very strong or stronger pedestrian warnings um, to be able to, uh, because these cars are so quiet. As far as what's different in the Kia Soul versus the, the Kia Nero, well, obviously the physicality of the design of the vehicle, but I think if you just take the interior part, a little bit different dash layout, which actually I like this dash layout quite a lot. Um, I, I think it's a little easier to digest and to work with than the Kona, to be honest with you. I know the Kona is designed to a bit be a bit more different to be a bit more futuristic and there's comments not that I don't like it but I just found this one a little bit more pleasant similar to the Nero you just kind of get right in and you're comfortable with the layout and you just go you don't really have to hunt around and look for stuff um, I like that the accents that the premium edition has um, as far as uh, you know on some metal on the doors uh, metal features on the doors that uh, that lights uh, interior lights bounce off at night and so forth it's, it's actually very very upscale um, fit, uh, fit and finish on this and one thing uh, on all these three models is fit and finish is excellent there's been no squeaks or rattles on any of the three vehicles including of course the, the Nero and the Kona that I just tested and now this vehicle uh, workmanship is, is excellent um, I found nothing at all to uh, to warrant any issues um, uh, as far as build quality goes on the Kia Soul so my conclusion on driving impressions on the Kia Soul EV is um, you know if if, if I had a bag of cash I dropped from the sky tomorrow and I had a choice of the Nero, the Kona, or the Soul, um, I really did like the Nero, I have to admit, but I'm actually leaning a bit more towards the Soul. This is a fantastic EV vehicle. I did manage to take it to the Milton, uh, my favorite test bed, the Petro Canada Milton Ultra Fast Charger. That's still there. It's free, so that's why I go. And it can support up to uh, 100 kilowatts of uh, Chatamo and 200 kilowatts of CCS Combo. So that's my test bed for anything that uh, is beyond the norm. So I did take it out there, as I mentioned, with 15% uh, range left on the uh, on the battery indicator and about 72 kilometers. So I plugged it in. Um, I was able to get a maximum sustained range of 78 it switched between 77 and 78 kilowatts it was kind of bouncing up and down for a while but it stayed relatively in that range for quite a long time till about the 60 percent range where then the charge started to taper down um, at the 30 minute mark so my test was basically to, to go to 80 percent and see or 45 minutes to kind of see whatever came first uh, because in the literature it says you know about 45 minutes to 80 percent will get you x range uh, and that kind of stuff so i wanted to kind of prove out the literature and at the 30 minute mark you'll see here that the state of charge was 62 percent my range was up to 278 kilometers so i gained well over 270 uh, i gained over 200 kilometers in that time period and my energy delivered was 34.5 kilowatts 
Um, at the 46 mark is when I uh, stopped the charge, when it hit 80%. So it's pretty well right on, on cue there um, for the 45 minutes to 80% uh, philosophy. My range was 380 kilometers, so I added uh, well over 300 kilometers of range in that 46 minutes. And I put in, uh, the power delivered was 47.5 kilowatt hours of, of power on that. Um, so that gives you an idea of the, the charging capabilities. Now that's that's very fine for this vehicle because again, because of the longer range, initially you won't need to charge as often. And uh, so st staying for 45 minutes or an hour. Now again, here in Canada, we don't have many uh, uh, CCS Combo and Chatamo stations that go beyond 50 kilowatts right now. They're, they're the, the Anything higher than that is very few. As I mentioned earlier in the show that there are more that are coming up. So for now, charging at 50 kilowatts, if you're down to 50, 15 or 10 percent, will take you well over an hour, probably closer to an hour 15, maybe even an hour and a half to do that. I, I haven't measured it. But again, because you're stopping less frequently for charging anyway, um, that shouldn't be an issue for taking this vehicle on long road trips. So I'm just DC fast charging here, pulling 75 kilowatts and the fan is on for the AC unit. So that makes sense as it's recirculating the coolant through the battery pack to keep it cool while we're rapid charging. Uh, so it's obviously making the noises. You can feel the air coming out and you can hear it. This ultra fast charger is a little loud and I'm next to a car wash, which is loud as well. But um, anyway, that's how the system works and it's working really well. So a couple things I that I guess are misses on this vehicle that I wish, you know, for the price point of uh, $52,000 Canadian plus 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 that they could have put in this vehicle. A um, couple of things were really there, there's there's no audible sound activates when I when I activate the auto lane keeping. So and what I found with the adaptive lane control part portion of that is that when you turn it on or turn it off or or, or turn it off, or it goes on and off, off by on its own, there's no audible alarm. It's just a very small icon on the dash that changes color. And on that subject of the lane keep assist, I did find it a bit ping-ponging, and you know what that means when it kind of goes back and forth to try to find its way in a lane uh, on the highway. I did find it a little bit, not that severe, but you could see it kind of going back and forth. It's not as steady as maybe some of the other systems that are out there, but I do wish that this vehicle at this price point had more cameras, at least a forward-facing camera, or as in the Kona Electric uh, case, uh, um, sense parking sensors. Okay, well, I hope you've enjoyed this show and my impressions and review uh, and thoughts about the 2020 Kia um, near a uh, soul. Sorry, so many cars, so little time. Soul all electric EV. It, it really is a nice car. Uh, the, I guess the biggest takeaway for me on this is I'm just quite surprised at how good it is. They've done a great job in soundproofing. They've done a great job in ride quality. The ride quality in this is very nice. I love the ergonomics. I do like like the funkiness and the the energy that this. Uh, in all pun intended, that this vehicle produces. It really gives a nice vibe, um, very lively, and it was a fun vehicle to drive around for a week. No problem at all. Very easy to, to maneuver, get in and out of. I do like the height. It's easy to get in and out. You're not so low. This is a, definitely a strong recommendation for me. In fact, it may be even something that I, I would consider this over the Kona, even though the Kona is more efficient. I just like the ergonomics and the driving habits and the, the driving style of this. Um, but at 51, uh, 595, so uh, plus your freight PDI, you're into the 53, you know, 54, 55,000 range before any taxes, incentives, and add ons. Um, you know, it's definitely a, a vehicle that could have had a couple of more features, um, but uh, even at that price, I think it's a really, really great, great electric vehicle. But overall, this is definitely a strong recommendation. All three of the, the vehicles in that Hyundai Kia family are fantastic electric vehicles. You're seeing great reviews on them. Definitely vehicles you can take on long road trips. And again, this is brand new and the range just, just keeps kind of getting better on this. So, uh, which is quite surprising, you know, to get to get almost 500 kilometers out of this in real life driving. Again, I'm not, you know, yes, I'm driving in eco mode, but I'm just, I'm going around doing what I need to do. It is just a phenomenal car to drive. So I want to thank again, Kia Canada for loaning me this vehicle for the week. Uh, thanks for the, giving me the, the bright color that I could stand out and uh, be noticed and talk to a few people at the same time. I very much appreciate that. Definitely a thumbs up for this vehicle and all the vehicles, as I said, in those families. Um, and this is something that you should look at if you're considering a very strong contender in the EV marketplace. 
And that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show, episode 62, my thoughts and impressions of the 2020 Kia Soul EV. Uh, thank you very much for sticking around and listening to all my ramblings. Um, I want to again thank everybody for watching the show, for always contributing to YouTube on comments and likes and, and uh, just keeping keeping things engaged. I appreciate it very much. Uh, again, I, I'm here for you viewers, and I'm here to help educate minds one tailpipe at a time as I try to do. Always uh, humble, humbled and thankful for my my Patreon supporters. Um, I thank you very much. If you're not sure what that is, you can check out my Patreon website. Even a dollar a month, if you'd like to just start at that, would go a long way in helping me to continue to produce the videos and do the things I have to do. Uh, I'll be going to Fully Charged Live in Austin uh, in early February, which is coming up February 1st and 2nd of 2020. If you haven't got your tickets, Excuse me, please check out their website and you can use a 15% discount code. Just put in EV Revolution. It is case sensitive, so look at the code here on the screen. Put that in to save yourself 50% on tickets for the show. Uh, but I'm working on going there and I look for, I already got some emails and, and comments from people saying they're going to be there, so I'm, I'm, I'm stoked about going down to Fully Charged Live and seeing some folks. So until that time, please, everybody, thank you very much again for watching. I much, much appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you on the next show. And please, everybody, stay safe and I'll I'll see you when I see you. Take care. Bye-bye.